I would love for you to share the story of behind the film, what inspired this documentary. Go on, um, uh, look, it's a, uh, growing up in a country like Australia where nobody ever heard of the word Armenia or where it was, um, that kind of got me interested in wanting to, you know, um, find out a little bit about my past. And um, then um, along the way I met up with this guy and um, then we met up with this guy and then it all came together. Yeah. That's the short story, but that there's a the long short story, story which we'll go into in the Q and A. But okay. yeah, no, but that's that's pretty much Not the same thing. It's um, we just kind of got together and we had this passion to make a documentary about Armenia, um, and the, and the passion was that we wanted to do a documentary about Armenia now, not Armenia in 1915. We uh, we've had quite a lot of those documentaries, and we wanted to kind of say to the world, look, we're still here, and look, our country is beautiful, our food is beautiful, our our women are beautiful. You know, just come along, see what we've you know what we've got in this beautiful country called Armenia and come and enjoy it with us and that's what it's all about yeah, yeah there's more to us than the genocide and Kim Kardashian so this is <laughs> this is hopefully a balance of what's in between that's right totally and tell me a little bit about some story behind the scenes maybe one of the most challenging or most uplifting day on set Oh, wow. There was quite that, a few of those. That might have been the, the drive yeah. to, uh, Lori, to, to Lori when we were doing the, um, you know, the bumpy road. That was quite a challenge for you. That was a challenge for me because we, we had a bit of food poisoning. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah. Yes. And we all had to really Not from fight Armenian hard. food. Not from Armenian food. Not from Armenian food. food. No, 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 no. no, no. no. But we, uh, we seriously struggled and, and the bumpy road all the way and we were sweating and we were trying to get there and we were like, oh God, how long is this going to take? And then uh, it took us how long? Five hours? Yeah, Four it was a five? long ride. A massive long ride. But we got there and, um, and it was worth it. it was Absolutely worth it. worth it. And we filmed everything about that place. It was stunning. That was the day of the Smart <coughs> Centre, filming the COAF Smart Centre. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, they, the other challenging day road, was yeah. when you had to clean the rugs on the roof and you had to get made up like one of the ladies who Yeah, I had to works, dress up um, like an Armenian woman. Um, wow. Well, that's the only way you can clean carpets, apparently, in Armenia, apparently. So, it's a traditional uh, way of cleaning. It's a very matriarchal society. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> you could say yeah, that. yeah, yeah, very much so. <laughs> so uh, but we had a great time doing it and, uh, and, it, and it was... Um, All revealed in the film. Yeah. So we must watch the film. Yeah, oh, yeah. Absolutely, you've got to come and watch the film. It's, um, we're very proud of this project. Um, and from the moment we started, we, we honestly didn't think the footage we were going to get was going to be as good as we, th you know, it is. And, um, and all the drone scenes, the, the historical scenes, the people, the interactions, the food, the, the culture. the footage as well. We've got the last interview that Charles Aznavour did, um, which for us is, you know, a fantastic coup. And we're very proud of that in particular, aren't we? Yep, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, definitely. One of the great uh, interviews. Uh, he was booked to do um, roughly around about 45 to 50 minutes with us. That's all they said that he can give. And he ended up finding out that we we're all Armenian. And he went, right. And he sat there. Two and a half hours later, we were still laughing. Yeah. Yeah. So that was great. That was a special, very special moment, I think, for all of us. Yeah, we got emotional um, that day. Yeah, we did. It? Yeah, it was quite emotional. Mm. And the stories he says in the documentary, which actually isn't in this part of the documentary, we, we'll probably do that as a, a, as a separate entity, but the stories he told us um, about Frank Sinatra, Ray Charles, um, and, and, and other stories that he'd worked, people he'd worked with were so amazing mm. that I just thought, Wow, and, and he brought us to tears, didn't he? And you'll see it in the documentary, by the way. Uh, there's a moment, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a moment he says something and it literally, it, we, we, we broke down. Mm. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Mm. It's great. What advice do you have for filmmakers who are wanting to do a travel documentary? Just be no. prepared. It's, it's a lot of hard work, yeah. as I discovered, but, um, you know, now this is the best part because it's, you know, it's... Yeah you know, the icing on the cake now. But look, if you believe enough in, in what you're doing and you're passionate about it, that's, I know everyone says that, but it really is 80%, 90% of the, of, of, you know, of, of the job. And that's what it was for me. If, if I didn't have that passion or drive, uh, I, I don't think I could have lasted the two or three years that it's taken. <laughs> so. Yeah, but you also need to be very flexible. You need to have lots of alternative plans. So if one thing doesn't work out when you're tra on a travel documentary, you need to have a backup that you can go to immediately because you're on a very, very tight schedule. That's right, yeah. And, well and that, you need to do that, yeah. yeah. So was that something you prepped or did you just go we, with the flow we, and... We, we, we prepped a lot, but we also had a lot of help from a lot of sort of big Armenian philanthropists and the church even who opened a lot of doors for us and yeah. enabled us to film in areas that nobody else is nobody allowed else to even go, go into, yeah. let alone film in there. Mm. So 
um, without their help, it would have been quite difficult. I mean, we would have had to deal with a lot of bureaucracy that literally we had a, a letter from Vehapad and a letter from a few other people which literally just opened doors and get people stood there saluting us rather than blocking us. So it was great. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and, and I think also in terms of the production, um, you know, I, I didn't... I, I, we went along having a, a broad sort of spectrum of ideas in terms of what stories we wanted to shoot, but I think when we got there, we, if, if we saw something that really, you know, took our, made, you know, got our attention, like the rug story, that really wasn't in the original rundown of no, stories. There was a, that, came yeah. of, that came about as a result of the production manager who, um, who was an Armenian woman from Australia, uh, who said, you've got to think about this because it's, it's quite a, a, a traditional thing that goes on and it's a dying tradition because as, you know, people have more, um, like, la you know, la access to laundries and washing machines, they don't <clears throat> necessarily do it in the traditional way. So it was a chance to see this and, yeah, so we had to drop everything and yeah. go and film it, yeah. you know what I mean? We, had, we broke down and, and one it was, of the and it was bad weather as well. Yeah, it was bad weather during that time. So we're, we're, fil we're filming outside on the rooftop and the only day during the whole production that it rained. Mm. So That's right. No, the, bre the breakdown when the car broke down on that lady That's at that right. farm yeah. who turned up and just fed us yeah. cheese that she'd made yeah. and, and, yeah. And, and leaves fresh and cheese, fresh like cheese. That's been made that and morning. lovish and, 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 would, and bread. And wouldn't take any payment at all yeah. and didn't, and didn't want bit. any acknowledgement and in fact wanted everyone away before her husband came home. No, seriously. <laughs> seriously, yeah. She said, please don't film. Don't film. Just go. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Just go. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The hospitality was something like I don't think we've ever seen before. No. It was like on a whole other level. We felt Incredible. like we were adopted by the time we left, didn't we? We were like, do we want to go? <laughs> well, one of, one of the things that comes across about this documentary as well is that Armenia is a place, well, even us as diaspora and Armenians who didn't know each other well at all before the, the, before the actual shooting process, Armenia is a place where you meet as strangers and leave as family. Yeah, it, sound, totally. it sounds so contrived to say that, but it's so true. Yeah. And, and that, you know, that really comes across during our, came across during our production yeah, process. I like the other comment that you made, I think, um, at the Sydney screening, and that was that you know, this whole project came together on a handshake via social media. You know, we've never signed a single contract between no. either of us. No. You know, it's just, it was, a, it was an idea and it was uh, something that we all were quite, you know, um, passionate, passionate about. about. Totally. And so we wanted to make it work. And, and you know, like getting texts from this guy at three o'clock in the morning because of the time difference in Australia and, you know, Kev, you know, the same. And it's, you know, it's, it's been, yeah. Doing the voiceovers in, in, in the studio. Right. He said, it'll take an hour. And, and four hours later, I'm going... <laughs> Welcome to Armenia, the place where people explore and, and see culture and food. No, no, Kev, I didn't enjoy that. Can you do that again? Yes, of course I can. And then I started hating you at one point. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> but, it, but it's interesting, as a collaborative project that we're working on, the first time that we were all together in the same room was at the rap party. That's right. Really? Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's right. I was right. going to ask, like, how close... You are you guys now after this oh, now, journey? Now, and now, we're, now we're very close. Oh, yeah. Now oh, we're yeah, really yeah, close. Yeah. Really Some close. Too close, but... Yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> I'll remove my hand shortly. What are you <laughs> doing? I mean, now you're traveling together, going to festivals, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. What's so going to happen once this is all done? Well, social media will go into um, uh, a platform where everyone can access it. Well, I mean, we're hoping to get this on Netflix and Amazon Prime. And really, we're trying to restrict the viewing of it until it's on those platforms. So we're having a lot of people sort of irritating, you know, kind of contacting us saying, oh, you know, we're really irritated because we really want you to give us a DVD or send us a link or whatever. And I'm saying, we want this on Netflix and watch it on Netflix. Send your thousand members and watch it on Netflix. Push it up through the rankings and get non-Armenians to watch it. That's our aim. That's right. And then the recognition goes out there. And then basically non-Armenians watch it and go, wow, I want to go to this country which is what it's all about. You guys yeah. are going to help tourism in Armenia. In We're the hoping end. to. We're that's hoping that's to. what it's all yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for chatting with us yeah, today. It was really lovely nice meeting to meet you all. You too. We hope you enjoy thank the you. film. Thank oh you. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to see it.